All right, if I can get my phone to cooperate, this is the fourth or fifth time I've tried to make this video. Every time my phone keeps stopping, the devil must not want this going out. I know he doesn't. But I uh, wanted to jump on here today real quick, give you a quick word of God. I, I was uh, at work today, driving on my way home today, and the Lord put a message in my spirit that uh, He wanted me to give. And I'm not trying to overload you with content. I'm not trying to make too many videos or whatever. But, uh, I mean, it's it's... I have no issue with people who upload every day or anything, but I, I, I don't feel out of the Lord to do that yet. As of right now, I feel like maybe once a week or so until the Lord moves me on to doing something else. Uh, I was talking to my good friend today, Jake, about uh, making a video about Easter. And I thank him again for being used to God to inspire these. And you'll probably hear me say that in some way, shape, or form every time I do one of these because... If it wasn't for, for him and God, I wouldn't be doing this. But uh, he'll, he'll be featured in some way, I guess, in gratitude in every video I make on here. But he'll be like the pineapple in Psych. You can see him somewhere in every episode. But um, I wasn't planning on doing this. I only planned on making that one video this week, and that was enough for me. But on the way home today, and when I, when I was at work, and then on the way home, the Lord put it in my spirit to put this together in order because somebody, according to his spirit, as I felt in my heart, needs to hear this. And I was going to put it in writing, but the Lord impressed it upon me t t to make another video and put it audibly online and then attach that to, to the writing that I do. And the Bible says, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. And the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. There's something special about audibly, something about audibly hearing the Word of God. And you don't have to audibly hear it. You can hear the Word of God just reading the Word of God. If you, can, if you have the ability to read, if you're literate, if you have the gift of sight. Reading is just as good as hearing, in my opinion. But there's something about hearing it. Whether it's through sign language or some other way. Something special about hearing it that the Holy Ghost gives, gives an, an, an anointing to. A special anointing. And so I felt led of the Lord to not just write it, but to speak it audibly. And there's a specific audience that God has given me this word for. It applies to everybody. If you're hearing this, it's for you. There's something in here for you. But there's a specific audience group of individuals who God is reaching out to through this video. And that's who He put it in my heart to do this for. And you'll understand probably who I'm talking about a little bit. But in Romans chapter 2, God led me to this verse, and I'll very quickly try to give you this word. I'm not going to try to... I'll try to keep this one shorter. 30 minutes later. Ch chapter 2, verse 3. Paul... Uh, writing under the anointing of the Holy Spirit said this. Well, let's start in the second verse. Chapter 2, verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And he's speaking about a lot of sins there. And do you think this, O man, who judges them which do such things, and do the same, that you shall escape the judgment of God? Or despise you the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Some wonderful commentary there. Again, I'm reading out of um, the Expositor's Study Bible. And as I said in the last video, if you're looking for a good study Bible, I would highly recommend this one. Um, I believe the commentary in this word is anointed by God. I'm, I'm not saying it's inspired of God. The word of God itself was inspired. But I believe the Holy Spirit, through an anointed man, oversaw the process of this, the commentary placed in this Bible. And there's a lot of good study Bibles out there in this world. But this one, I believe in particular, is unique. And when you read it, uh, you increase in understanding. And there's an anointing on these words. 
because it all points to Jesus and his cross. So if you don't have an expositor study Bible, I highly recommend it. Also, I'm wearing the Trust God hoodie from the B. Tatum merch shop. He's the man. He got this to me very quickly. I ordered it. Only took two or three days to get to me. But um, that's what's in front of me and on me right now. But uh, as I was um, as I was at work, the Spirit of God told me that He wants to make an offer of His goodness on Good Friday to a particular group of souls. And I was thinking about some of the people who are doing evil in this world. I was thinking about how the Chinese government is plaguing their people in such an unacceptable way. Just persecuting their citizens. And I was thinking about the other things going on. The people persecuting this world through, through this virus. Through the, the pandemic. I was thinking about all the tyranny, all, all the conspiracy. And the people behind it. I thought about the pedophiles. Those who are doing some of the most wicked things in this world to the most innocent beings among us. I thought about the sex traffickers. I was sitting in the truck at work. And all this was going through my mind. I had something lit, uh, playing in my earpiece. I don't remember what it was. I, couldn't I can't tell you what it was. But when I was thinking about that. I began to think about the judgment of God that's coming for people who do such things. And how stern it will be. And how, how tragic it will be when they fall into the hands of a righteous God. When Jesus begins to judge, I began to, to think about that. Thinking about the awful sins they committed. Then I began to think about what God's going to do to those who do such things. And Paul said it. <laughs> Be sure, we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And then the previous chapter, chapter 1, he had listed a number of sins, of terrible sins. But when you think about some of the things going on in this world, in the name of whatever, you can think about the terrible judgment of God that's coming for those souls. And I was thinking about that. And it hurts me to think about because I love them. I don't want anybody to go to hell. I don't want anybody to be judged. But in the middle of my, my carnal thinking and thinking that God is going to get them. And He will. God is going to judge them and He will. The Holy Spirit came into my thought process. The Holy Spirit invaded my mind and my heart. And He told me, I want, to, I want you to to tell them, in so many words, I'm not quoting him literally, this was the impression put in my soul, the fingerprint of God's mercy. He said, I want, to tell, I want you to tell them that on Good Friday, I want to extend my goodness to them. My goodness to them. And he said, I love them. And that's hard for us to understand. I'm not trying to act better than anybody. I'm not trying to to flatter anybody. I'm telling you what God told me in, in the middle of thinking about God's judgment on people who do such wicked things. Good Friday. I want to extend my goodness to them. An offer of mercy. An offer of pardon and forgiveness because I love them. Call it Goodness Friday. Because God is extending goodness to wicked souls who deserve judgment. He said, and it won't just last for Good Friday. That's a figure, that's a, a figure of speech. Because Good Friday is a celebration of Jesus Christ being the sacrifice for our sin. But call it Goodness Friday because it is His goodness extended to you. But His mercies are new every morning. It just doesn't last Friday. It's here today. Now is the day of salvation. I could name names. And most everybody knows exactly who they are who are conspiring against this world who are doing evil. 
I named a country with an evil government. There are many countries with evil, evil leadership. I could name names, I won't, but every, basically everybody knows who they are. The, the minority are the ones who aren't awake to what's actually going on and who's behind it. The world knows. Most of the world knows. The minority are the ones who believe what they see and hear from unreliable sources. The minority. The majority know exactly what's going on and who's behind it. And more than all, God knows. And God knows more than we could ever know. Because God knows the intents of the hearts. God even knows the betrayal that some of you have planned against one another. <clears throat> God knows. All things are naked to Him, the Bible says. All things are exposed to Him. God knows the evil that you're committing. God knows the evil that you dwell in. God knows the evil imaginations of your heart on a nightly, daily, continual basis. <clears throat> I could name your name, but that doesn't matter. All I'm going to say is you know who you are. Speaking to everybody, but specifically, the Holy Spirit speaking specifically to those of you who are in line for such terrible judgment. You don't have to go through with it. God is extending His goodness to you. Jesus wasn't crucified on Friday. But... It's the, this is the celebration of His crucifixion. And you can have His goodness because He died for you. And He took the penalty of your sin and He paid for it. His face and His visage was marred more than any other. He was beaten so, so mutilated beyond the point that He didn't look human anymore. He took it for you. Barabbas went free. Jesus died. You can go free. You can be forgiven because Jesus died. And if there's a thought in your heart, like I've been saying in these last two videos, that God doesn't love you, that God won't forgive you, He told me He will. Goodness Friday. Because Jesus died and shed His blood, you can be forgiven. God loves you. Most everybody who stands on the side of truth like I do rebuke and condemn you, and probably rightly so for the evil you do. But Jesus wants to say, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. The Spirit of God put it in my heart that He loves you more than you could know. And He wants to save you and forgive you of your sins. The goodness of God leads to repentance. The goodness of God leads to repentance. The Bible says, save some with fear, pulling them from the fire. But more than anything else that leads us to, to repent is because God is so good to us in the face of all our disgusting evil, all our sin. He's so good to us. But you don't repent so much. When, when you feel His Spirit, and I pray you do right now, speaking to your heart, I, I pray to God you feel the tug of His Spirit. Not just in conviction, but in love. That you can know even when your hands are dripping with blood. Even when you're in the middle of conspiring even more evil. That God loves you. That God loves you. The goodness of God leads to repentance. It's so humbling, so overwhelming when you feel His love. I remember when I was saved at 8 years old, my heart was flooded with the love of God. How could He love me? When I fail, when He forgives me, my heart's flooded with His love. He'll pick you back up. He doesn't condemn. One of these days He will judge and He will condemn. But that's not His will. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. When you get a vision and an understanding of how good He is to you, in light of what you deserve, more than fear or anything else, that will lead you to repentance. When you understand how evil you are and you know it more than anybody else, and how you deserve hell than probably anybody else does, even though we all deserve hell. And I'm not, I wasn't any worse in sin than you are, even though you've done much more than I ever did in sin. When you get an understanding of though how He loves you and that Jesus took your penalty, and he, he was beaten and whipped and crucified for you, that'll lead you to fall on your knees and weep before God confessing your sin more than anything else 
The goodness of God leads men to repentance. God could have judged you years ago. God could judge you right now. But the goodness of God leads to repentance. The song says, I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head down, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I'm able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. And in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after me, running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. The goodness of God leads to repentance. I don't care what you've done. God loves you. God will forgive you. Goodness Friday. Jesus took the penalty. Jesus took your place so you can be forgiven. Very simple. Very short, but the Spirit of God is reaching out for you. This could be your last Good Friday. Some of you are up in age. Not to mention nobody's promise tomorrow. Please accept His goodness. Call upon Him while He's near. When He reaches for you, there's a reason why. He knows the future. He knows why He's reaching out for you. Some of you might be on the brink of that awful judgment. But God's trying to save you. Jesus is reaching out His hand. All your life He's been faithful to His goodness for you. He remembers when He knit you together in your mother's womb. He remembers your mother and father. He was there when He created you. He's willing to forgive you and look beyond your faults. He loves you. I hope you can feel it. I hope you know it. He'll change your heart. He'll make you new. All your life He's been faithful. All your life He's been so good. If you really want to experience the goodness of God, Receive it right now. Receive it right now. This could be your last Good Friday. This could be your last opportunity. Goodness Friday doesn't, doesn't always come. No one's promised tomorrow, but God loves you. I hope you know that. you got to know two things. Number one, you will be judged, and it will be terrible. It will be awful. It will be awful, and it will be eternal and fatal. Number two, though, God loves you, and God wants to save you and forgive you, and He will. I hope you understand that. Pray. Just ask Him to forgive you. Accept His goodness. Receive His goodness. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Receive it. Be set free. Be forgiven. Experience the joy of sins forgiven. He loves you, friend. He loves you. I'm speaking to you. You know who you are. I don't know exactly who the Holy Spirit is speaking to, but He's speaking to somebody. Don't repent because you're afraid of what's coming. Repent because He's so good that He died for you and He loves you even though He should hate you. Repent and be made whole. His goodness is running after you. All your life He has been faithful. All your life He has been so, so good. Use that breath to glorify Him. He loves you. He loves you. Repent. And be made whole. Believe in Jesus. Goodness Friday. Goodness Friday. You don't have to have. You don't have to be judged for your sin because God's goodness is greater than your your evil and your sin. God loves you. Receive His goodness on Goodness Friday. On Good Friday. God bless you.